A lot of commercial fisheries up and down the country have a rule that you've got to use the fisheries own pellets. So from a match fishing point of view, if you're fishing with pellets and everyone else's, your bait's going to be exactly the same as theirs, right? Not necessarily, because there's quite a few little things you can do to make yours a little bit different to stand out from the crowd. One of the factors that you can change about your pellets is the flavour of them and of course I'm lucky enough to spend a lot of time with carp anglers at mainline match we've got a whole team of big fish specimen anglers and something that I've noticed the mega keen about is smells and flavours and you know what looking at it more recently I don't think I've done enough of it in match fishing so the first thing changing the flavour of your pellets or enhancing it making it a little bit more powerful because you look at a lot of commercial fisheries, like Little John, where we are today, the water is coloured, so if your pellets smell better than everyone else's, the fish are going to find them a little bit quicker. I keep things simple, and I have a rule that when it's warm, when the sun's out, and fish are really ravenous, I like meaty, fishy flavours. Peppered tuna, sticky syrups, just like that. It absolutely stinks. You can smell it in the evening when you've been using it, even after you've been in shower. So that's going to be a bit unfortunate for your missus, but pepper tuna or the betaine one anything fishy and powerful activate is great in warm weather when it's a little bit cooler however and you're fishing for species like skimmers f1s and odd carp mixed in the water's a little bit clearer go for something a little bit less intrusive a little bit less powerful something like cell that's sweet a little bit coconut -y, and you'll find it does enhance your pellets that little bit more than the plain ones but it's not too powerful to put fish off Another variable that I like to change when I'm using plain fishery pellets is the colour of them. Not a lot of people do it, everyone just uses plain old brown pellets. So if I can make mine stand out that little bit more than everyone else's, I feel like I'm going to catch a few more fish. And again, I've got a few simple rules that I apply when it comes to it. In really coloured water, like here at Little John, it's murky, there's loads of feeding fish. We're going into the springtime now. I like a nice vivid colour, something fish can see falling through the water. Or if you're fishing with a hybrid feeder or a method, your pellets are really bright, they're going to stand out. When you're loose feeding pellets, you want something in the middle of them that fish can home in on. So something like a bright red or a bright yellow, captivate, colourant flavour is perfect. It dyes the pellets, really rich, you only need a tiny little bit of it. You don't need to do them the night before or anything, you can simply pour a little bit on as you're preparing your pellets on the morning and they dyed perfectly. In clearer water on more difficult venues or in the winter time when fish aren't moving about as much, having a bait that is simply a different colour to everything else can be a big edge. So darker colours like a rich brown colour or even a green that will stand out from the bottom but not be too obtrusive can really work. Don't think that you can only use flavours and colourants on feed baits because they're also really effective on up baits as well. Things like expander pellets dyed a vibrant colour stand out like a target in coloured water in the summer months. Even meats deadly dyed red and yellow so it's different to what fish are used to seeing. Thinking in depth about colouring your baits, flavouring your baits and just making them that little bit different to what everybody else is using is definitely going to give you an edge.